So Serena, I have a, a question for you because as a, as a vegan, that means you cannot eat animal products, correct? correct. Right, that's fair to say, <laughs> yeah. um, consume them, you know, maybe you know, soaps or whatever, but the, I saw a long time ago, people were eating bugs. Is that vegan? Can you eat bugs? Cause they're not technically animals, right? Mm, they are in the animal kingdom. So I would say technically, and uh, there's a lot of questions about bug sentience for sure. I'd say that's in a similar category personally to like some of the people that question whether it's okay to eat like mollusks, like clams or mussels. Mm, okay. Um, claiming that, you know, there's evidence that they're not sentient or something, but really the reality is we don't know. And they are all technically in the animal kingdom. Mm. So I like if you were going to eat bugs instead of cows, pigs, and chickens, that would be a lot less problematic to me, mm. but it's still, it's not vegan and it's not something I would support or ever do or consider an ideal solution. Interesting. Cause that's a big, yeah. that's a big like world economic forum conspiracy like they're gonna make us eat the eat the bugs oh i think they are it's i mean it's really, really? weird well i don't know if they're gonna make us but no but it, but yeah it's it's becoming a thing like i notice it yeah yeah in yep. the party like, uh, yeah from the five to the six we be in the mix with that rare candy paint job on the whip i need food for the kids money for the rent fuck a lockdown baby i can't do that shit and i don't never vote because i'm fucking broke and either way i know the police ain't gonna leave me alone on the plane by the Glen Rock, me crypto told me I should bring the Glock with me. So I packed up my piece and I'm sliding. Slide. Cause we might get caught up in a riot. Middle finger Trump, middle finger Biden. Fuck a left, fuck a right, is you riding? Know you love to see it, dudes rocking. Ain't no politics, baby, we just talking. From the birds to the bricks, we be in the mix. With that rare candy paint job on the whip, who you with? When I see all the stuff about, you know, climate change, oh, grazing cows is bad, we need to reduce emissions, you know, future plant solutions. And then it's like your options are plant-based, lab-grown meat, or bugs. And I see that, like I've seen that in a lot of World Economic Forum, um, uh, you know, um, yeah. some of the other, some of the big, just like, you know, economic and environmental sort of pushing a narrative and bugs definitely are in there and it's it's just weird to me it's like we have a great solution right now this is true of the lab grown meat thing too like you know rather than trying to find new ways to create new industries and profit off of it like why not just just go with what we've got whole organic you know plant foods grown in a sustainable manner because you can't you can't do that because then that kills the healthcare scheme you know and yeah, uh they fair. have to keep they have to do they're doing like the they're doing the twister you know when you get like two blues and, and a red you know and you got to do the yeah. fucking they're like oh, we want everyone to cut back on this shit but we also need to keep people sick and dying and disease so organics out that's why that whole that's why it's all lab meat and stuff it's not because they actually care about yeah animals or anything you know it's yeah it's and because they can patent and like monetize lab grown mm -hmm. meat in a controlled centralized way like no Lab grown meat does not uh, work with food sovereignty. Like it really doesn't. And I think that's something that I wish a lot of vegans would understand. Well, who are speak kind of on, speak on that. Give, a, give a few thoughts on that. What do you mean? Yeah. So like having like anybody can go and grow, you know, organic plant foods in their backyard. Theoretically, like if you have some land or even a pot, you can plant a few seeds, grow a tomato plant and get yourself some fresh produce from your backyard. It is literally impossible with the technology and scaling and equipment required to grow meat from cells in a lab. There is no way that individuals or a small community or co-op or family farm, like, it will be simply too expensive and infeasible and too technical and technologically difficult to do it like it will only be able to be grown at scale in large biotech facilities by large corporations yeah. so lab grown meat is like inherently a tool to facilitate more corporate control of our food supply because it just it does not work with food sovereignty the way like you mm -hmm. know agroecology and growing your own produce does yeah so how would how would okay so even back to what i was originally saying 
Yeah. How would you how would you do bugs on a large scale? I just don't get that. I know obviously I understand there's a thing, but like would you just have a guy like a bunch of bunch of like people making three dollars an hour in like a in a third world country with like a bunch of nets and stuff? Like it doesn't make yeah. sense to me. And like I see I see like kind of bougie like insider uh, YouTube channel and stuff like here here's what you do with the cicadas, you know. And I know uh -huh. you're you're in mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you got cicadas out in Kansas or or yep. uh, anything, but yeah, like there are people like I saw people like making like cicada asada tacos and shit. Yeah, like yeah. I was like, this looks horrible. And yeah. but like <laughs> and like like for me, like that's I, I I've eaten bugs before, like at science camp they had vinegar ants that I'm not gonna lie. It was like they were like kettle chips, damn near. Like they were they were pretty yeah. good. Like, but yeah. I don't. How would how would you do bugs on a large scale? Like I don't. I, don't. I, they, they I have, have no idea, China, honestly. They, <laughs> they have farms, you said. Yeah. Well, I I'm kind of I'm That's kind of a weird Serena job. That's a weird job. Mm -hmm. I'm there is a his from an herbal perspective. There is a history of using bugs in insects and in, in Chinese medicine. And I've tried because I, I, I have I don't know I don't really care I've. I've tried, um, and there's a specific kind of ant that they use as a supplement, supplemental herb that I've tried and it's, it's good. I mean, it, it has an effect for sure. And I, I think that there is a certain type, like veganism can be hard for a lot of people. Like even if they're doing it right and stuff, there can be energy issues and stuff like that. I'm not saying that it's deficient or anything like that, but, and I don't think meat is the answer for sure, but. I have, well, I first read about the ant and a lot of people, a lot of vegans were doing vegan plus uh, polyrachis ant extract. And that mm. seemed to fill like a lot of gaps for like B12 and zinc and stuff like that in a vial available form. Um, just for anyone who's listening, who, you know, that might be something to consider. Um, but I don't do that regularly and I don't need it and I haven't. And, but I just, I just like to experiment with that shit. Mm. But in terms of culinary, like that's very unappetizing for me. And I know it's a cultural thing. And, um, on the lab meat, uh, there's one, there's one thing I'm pro lab meat on, and that's uh, pet food. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. I can't see, I can't see a reason. Like we give animals the shittiest meat ever. Yes, we do. Yes, you we know, do. and it's like, well, I don't, I don't see how lab meat could be worse than that. But of course, it's not gonna, you know, it's it's not gonna end there. Bill Gates, you know, doesn't care about dogs and cats. You know, he, yeah. So anyway, that's. That's my so start feeding your that. feeding your dogs cicadas is what he's gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> well, and for the record, Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation have given money directly to some of the both nonprofits and um, startups that are trying to produce lab grown meat. So oh, he is yeah. directly, directly involved in that one. <sighs> That's why I'm pro so look at like you know, if you had to choose impossible burger versus uh, beyond, right? You mm -hmm. know, they're both they're both like dumb startups or whatever, but okay. Impossible burger tastes like shit. You have to cook it in a very specific way. Got Bill Gates fingerprints all over it. They don't care about GMOs or non GMO. They they're distinctly pro GMO, you know, yeah. and pro industrial ag farming versus beyond gluten-free. It's not organic, but they're like way more agrarian. I would say, you know, less GMO focused, you yeah. know, it's GMO free. Uh, um, the guy, the head guy doesn't seem evil. Like, you know, I've just, I've listened to interviews by him. He just seems like a cool dude, you know? So if I had to pick, you know, oh, and you can cook it like a normal burger. You don't have to, the impossible ones, I've tried it. You have to cook it at like 200 degrees. <laughs> it's so dumb. Like the coldest part of the grill or the other it falls apart and shit. So anyway, not, I don't even eat that shit anyway, but just as a little rant right there. Oh, yeah, I'm for, know. like, yeah, yeah, I for sure see, like a lot of people compare the products I definitely okay. see the companies very differently for the reasons you mentioned, like the impossible burger has GMO lab produced heme iron in it specifically. Yeah. And uh, beyond doesn't have anything like that. A lot of their ingredients are certified organic. Yeah. Their product is like project non-GMO verified. So yeah, for all those mm -hmm. reasons, not that either of them are healthy or ideal or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, yeah. The, the heme iron, I know that there's, there's always another story coming out that they, it's, uh, it's like from the soy root. So straight up soy, first of all, <laughs> no, nah, that's, that's your and, username. Uh, I heard. Yeah, exactly. Straight up soy. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, the, and I'm not anti soy, I was kind of a joke, but the, uh, the whole, the, I know they keep doing, there's, there's always little issues and little articles coming out that the, the testing for that specific molecule, uh, doesn't really even act like heme iron. It could be potentially worse, you know, on, mm. on that scale. And that there's like the FDA did some bullshit, big surprise, you know, to get to get that passed. 
Yeah. Uh, and it's test on animals for anyone that cares yep, about that. That too, yeah. of course. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, so vegan shit's tested on animals? Yeah. They had to. Well, <laughs> there's, it's, oh, yeah, it's been a debate in the vegan yeah. community. Interesting. But yeah. The heme iron specifically that's, pro- you know, produced from like GMO bacteria in a lab, they, that was a new food additive, basically. Mm-hmm. And so they had to get it approved by the FDA. And they claim that they had to do animal testing. So they like fed it to some rats and then killed the rats to like see their insides or whatever. Um, But they didn't have to, the point that people are missing is they didn't have to use a new genetically modified lab grown, you know, heme Mm -hmm. iron. Like there's plenty of other companies that are doing things straight from plants. It wouldn't have required the animal testing, but yes, they did. And they then they, they said they didn't do it. They contracted it out to a lab that did do it or something. It's like <laughs> whatever. Yeah, sick. Super I love ethical. The, yeah. Yeah. No, and I love the whole because I mean, you know, lab testing on the rats is already well ethically questionable and just bad. Usually bad science. It doesn't really, you know, most of the time it's not good. But I love yeah. when even in spite of all that, and it, it not just talking about impossible. It could be a drug. Could be anything. You know, FDA related. Uh, where they. <laughs> They test something unethically on rats. They get a bad result. Then they hide the result anyway and give it to humans. So it's like, not only it's like the, the, t- the lab, MR- test, the that lab how rat thing mRNA is, is, was tested. No. Yeah, well, it's literally <laughs> it's, it's literally just like a it's just a formality that we use. Even if we get a bad result, it's we just throw the rats away anyway. The rats die at a needless death, and it still fucks up the humans. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Yeah. And for anyone like questioning what I'm talking about, uh check out the Jonathan Latham's poison papers, web poisonpapers.org, mm-hmm. where all of the chemical tests, we've introduced more than 70,000 chemicals in the last century, novel chemicals. And all of them were basically tested on rats by the EPA. And, and the history of that is it's like not even bad science. It's just not science. Like they, they were throwing <laughs> away rats in the test group. You know, they're like melting through the bars and the cages. You know, and they're like, all right, let's just get rid of that one. And that's Looks how like it's working. Chem- yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how <laughs> well, all these chemicals are passed in the market. Yes. Yeah, so. There was that other article, I think, not from Poison Papers, but I, <clears throat> Jonathan, I think, reprinted it on his site. But it was something like a look inside one of the labs that was doing a bunch of testing for GMOs or glyphosates in the uh, glyphosate in the UK with monkeys and it was just like full of just straight up corruption where they were just faking data and manipulating notebooks to say that like it wasn't having impacts when it was and they were there was huge animal neglect too so really really terrible and that was like the lab that was responsible for a lot of the you know regulations and things saying oh glyphosate i think it was glyphosate or something is Mm -hmm. safe you know and that uk regulators were using and companies were pointing to and it was just completely corrupt yeah yeah are you are you familiar with you know brett weinstein serena yeah yeah are you he has a hypothesis are you familiar with the whole apparently and he's kind of cool about it but apparently like his he came up with the idea and his PhD advisor kind of stole it from him. And so it's kind of shady already, you know, one of those things. Mm. And, uh, but, um, but he's like a pretty humble dude and he's just like, whatever, you know, but uh, he came up with an idea that we're the way we, the way we physically breed lab rats and mice literally extends their telomeres to like a comically large degree to make them Mm. essentially on human terms, essentially invincible. So we do all these tests on, genetically uh superior lab rats that are bred for this thing so we miss all these toxic effects of the drugs that we use to apply for for human consumption through the fda uh but it's it, there's an evolutionary aspect to it basically that's got totally ignored right interesting and, uh, i have not heard that yeah it sounds pretty convincing i know he's all huh. about it you know but uh yeah mm-hmm. i mean well, it wouldn't it wouldn't completely surprise me um but i'm i've I'm just skeptical of a lot of animal testing in general because mm-hmm. animals are not good models for all human diseases in the first place. Like, and I think there's a really great thing that sort of gets missed, but you know, it's like when you ask people why is testing on animals justified, it's like, well, they're different than us, you know, they're they're not like us. So it's okay that things we do to them, we can't ethically do that to humans. But then if you're like, why do the results from animals apply to humans? Well, because they're similar to us. Uh, So it's like, 
are they right. enough like us that the results apply and it's enough? you know you can't have it both ways was the wiggle room yeah the, and that's kind of the the roundabout justification for animal testing in general that i find really problematic so who do you test it on it's a good question i because um, it's like oh, what are you gonna do kids i mean it's like it's weird i i don't know like i i'm with so you we're already I'm, doing that we're already yeah, doing i that. i understand yeah. i'm not <laughs> yeah. saying that that doesn't happen but what i because i i see some people especially like when and we'll get to, i, I want to pick your brain about mrna technology and the vaccine huh. coming up later but like there's a lot of people saying like oh man the, the, this is testing on kids we need to be doing this more to animals even though they did and like all the rats died but the um you know like <laughs> like uh i'm just starting to think these people just don't want rats in the world anymore i'm just yeah, starting to think, I mean, like, I, like they're just like I, we're anti-rat more than anything than pro uh, pro <laughs> stopping viruses and stuff but anyways like who do you test it on that's why I, how yeah. do you test things how do you do a clinical trial like, so I do think there are some new technologies coming out that I think are really cool called like lung on a chip or heart on a chip that are, uh, my understanding is that have a lot better results and applicability to humans. And so it's sort of like in vitro with cell cultures, it's things where, and, and to be, and it doesn't always translate. Nothing always translates hundred percent. Right, right, right. That's the problem. It's like, you can do all these tests in animals and the results are usually like 50, 50. It's like flipping a mm -hmm. coin that the results are even going to apply to humans. So how is that even statistically helpful? Like we get drugs that could be beneficial in humans that don't work in the animals we tested them in. And we do the opposite where it, you know, misses dangers in animals and then is dangerous in humans. So I don't think it's necessarily doing us that much good right now to even mm. be testing on animals, but an alternative that doesn't have the ethical issues, at least that animal testing does are like in vitro cell-based tests, mm. um, which, and I worked actually in a contract lab for one summer that was doing like non-animal testing methods for chemical and cosmetic companies, basically. And that's a whole other story. I had plenty of issues with what they were doing too, but it was, it wasn't testing on live animals and they would do things like grow human skin cells, you know, in a lab to have, so that you'd essentially have a tiny piece of human skin that you could test chemicals on to see if they burned or reacted the way like actual human mm -hmm. skin would, because it was human skin cells. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so there are a lot of things like that. And then lung on a chip and heart on a chip are these like miniature like models of parts of the human system. So they've, they're able to create like the way a lung kind of breathes at a miniature level out of cells and they can pump, you know, air and liquid through it to see like, oh, we can replicate pneumonia on this lung on a chip. We can replicate the impacts of smoking. Oh. Um, and then they can test, you know, drugs or things on, on those. And again, it's not perfect. Um, but I do think that technology is... Uh, pretty cool and yeah worth definitely pursuing. a better alternative yeah. worth, worth pursuing pursu worth pursuing see if it works yeah i, I see what you mean um, and then, so yeah and then i'll no, 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 said no, you've got uh you do have a lot of humans and this is true with like the covid vaccines that are willing to volunteer themselves for science and if people want to volunteer themselves to be tested right you know, like, yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> it's better. I mean, you asked and they said yes. And they signed a paper, you know I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. more ethical. I, if I it's true informed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If it's not Melinda Gates pretending she speaks, uh, um, yeah. you know, an African language that, uh, yeah. and, oh what no, I know the, they signed it. Yeah. What about but, the, that's my favorite reply to any, any like pro vax stuff. Just, I just post the pic of the 12 year old girl that was paralyzed in the COVID trials, you know, I'm like, and she, that's the thing I could, I know, I don't want to assume or whatever, but I know exactly what her family's like. It's like, we fucking love science, yard sign. Yeah. And she's like, I want to be a scientist when I grow up. And then just totally misled by all her elders. <laughs> right. A science, you know, and I know. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true? The whole, um, the aborted fetal cell thing was used to produce all the COVID vaccines, Serena. I think that only applies to the Johnson and Johnson one. Okay. Mm. okay. Pretty oh, sure. Oh, because it's the non -MR mRNA. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. So it's the, the mRNA ones didn't use like cell culture. And that's where the aborted fetal tissue comes in, like to grow all traditional vaccines that are virus, live virus vaccines, where you have to like produce a bunch of the virus and then sort of kill it and stick it in the vaccine. So you have a piece mm -hmm. of the virus in the vaccine. 
those are the vaccines that essentially have to be grown using some sort of tissue culture. Mm -hmm. And they will use like Vero monkey kidney cells for that. They'll use dog cells a lot. And then there's a couple aborted fetal tissue cell lines Mm -hmm. that they also use. So that's where that comes in. Damn. That's crazy. The, uh, actually I had a, I had a question uh, for you, Serena. It was a personal one for me. So like, I, I like to I, mean, I I will never be a, a full vegan. Um, like uh-huh. I, I just probably just won't happen. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend it is, uh, but the, the, um, I do like realize, and even a lot of people realize uh, a lot of like smarter people will realize that maybe like three meals a day, we don't need to eat meat, you know, like, you know, just certain, <laughs> like certain changes you can make. And I'm definitely there. Um, even we had like some guys called the good old boys on, um, and they even admitted the same thing. They're like, if we're going to get a good society going, we're not going to be able to get like triple quarter pounders every day. Like, you know, like it's, you uh-huh. have to consume a little more ethically. Even they understood. And those guys are like meat and potatoes guys, but you, you run, right? Like you're a runner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me too. I I've done a, a couple marathons before. And like, you've had to, I had to train pretty hard. And like, I don't understand how vegans put calories back in their bodies, like to replenish. Like, I just don't get mm-hmm. it. Like how you, cause I would have a 15 mile run like training uh-huh. run as I yeah. on like a Sunday and I would be down like 2000 calories. You know what I mean? Like, like for that. Mm-hmm. So, and for me, like, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I could eat a bunch of beans. I could eat a bunch of this and that, but it's like, damn, just like two pieces of chicken. Just, wow. I like, put me right back in it. Like, so like, what, what would you say for somebody like that? Somebody who's training, maybe even bodybuilding certain things like mm-hmm. that. Like how, how do you replenish? Um, and not have your stomach grumbling super crazy. Yeah. So smoothies are what has worked best for uh-huh, me. That, and I'm bringing that up again. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, <laughs> the, I love like smoothies. The, the vegan yeah. bodybuilders I know, that's what they do as well. And right. I know some who don't even use like protein powder or anything. They'll actually take like white beans or chickpeas and blend them into their smoothie. That's cool. I like um, that. I've also like, I am training for half marathon right now. And I ran one before I have not gone awesome. the full marathon length awesome. yet, but uh, I, I'm never doing it again. I don't remember <laughs> okay. it. Yeah. I've done it th- twice. It's, oof, it's fun, but it sucks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> half marathons, like perfect distance. For me. I'll do another half. I love halves. Yeah. Go ahead. But, uh, so after my long runs, I do like the smoothie and I saw it on from some other, I think ultra marathoners website, vegan ultra marathoners. I don't remember where, but I kind of adapted it. And so I'll do like, um, I'll boil some sweet potato and beets and have those in my fridge to do with stuff. And then put like a chunk of sweet potato, a chunk of like boiled beet, um, with like some white beans and plus, you know, handful of spinach, some soy milk, and then like blueberry, frozen blueberries, frozen banana, you know, all that stuff. Um, but, and then I'll also put like a piece of, uh, of actual like raw turmeric root in mm-hmm. yeah. and it does affect the flavor uh, a little bit, but that's, that's dope. I know. I, I think my wife's done that a couple of times. I'm not, but I'm not I sure really that. like it. I feel like, tur- I mean, turmeric just has like such great, uh, you know, it's got so much in it. That's so powerful for recovery, oh, yeah. especially. And so I get the, the raw, you could do ginger root too. Yeah. I think um, ginger is what we've done. Yeah, 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 definitely. But, um, but that's how, like, I'll do that right after my run and then eat full meals. Okay. I personally haven't had, it's funny, like, I I get a lot of people asking me, like, oh, how do you, you know, put on weight? And, like, that has not been an issue I have pretty much ever had my entire life. I love eating so much. Right. <laughs> and I love snacking. Right. Like, it it's, I have the opposite issue. It's not really an issue, but just, like, I am more like, oh, I don't want to overdo it on how much I'm eating or late at night snacking. And if I let myself go and eat like snack as much as I would constantly, like I would have no problem putting on or getting as many calories. Um, But smoothies definitely and adding in the beans, the sweet potato, the beet. Beet is also super good for runners because it actually helps. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard this stuff. Oh, yeah. No, I'm a a lot of beets. Yeah. 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 So that's why I put that. I do. I also do like carrot, beet, celery juice a couple times a week sometimes. That that tastes awful, Serena. Admit it. That tastes awful. You got to put a lemon lemon and an apple in there. I I, I hate celery. Uh, Yeah. Carrot juice, nectar of the gods, though. Come on. Carrots, leave, carrot is can... the best part of there. That's carrots yeah. are doing a lot there. I'll agree. I'll admit. Then yeah. leave out the celery and just go for the carrot. Beet. What about the, I, I don't mind what about the, the celery. psychos that uh, psychos that only drink 
so 32 ounces of pure celery a day oh, <laughs> oh you, no 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 the celery juice by itself is gross you should like, be have animal testing together. done to you if that yeah happens. yeah but uh, that's the, no. you guys, follow, you guys follow together. medical <laughs> medical medium we should we got to do a medical medium episode i love that dude he's i agree with like half of what he says but he's he's insane dude he's, oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i know what you're he's talking a, about the celery juice guy you know yeah yeah no, and, he's just, and he's so funny he thinks he invented like like eating vegan or what he's because I, i've been watching his life because i read his one of his books and i was like okay this i could already tell it was like half bullshit and half really cool you know like one of those things yeah and and then i uh i started listening to his live streams and holy shit man he's like he's like a lot of you chiropractors a lot of you doctors recommended not eating eggs that's that's medical medium information when are you going to give me credit bro and it's like <laughs> dude like everyone like you, not eating eggs is like a common thing dude he's, yeah, he's i, I nuts, don't man. yeah he's, oh, he's, he's the guy that, he's the guy that um he gets his info from um, the spirit of compassion. All his info is filtered through the spirit. So, and I'm not like, I believe in that shit, but I mean, he's, again, it's kind of egoic to claim you get all your info from spirit of compassion and then like hating on doctors who are stealing your egg-free diet recommendations. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not know. trying to hate on medical medium. I, it's, he's good. It's like somebody in front of him at the lunch truck, yeah. like, is like, hey, can I get the sausage sandwich with no egg? He's like, when are you going to give me credit for that? Yeah. Not yeah. Ordering without the egg. <laughs> yeah. What's up with that, man? Yeah. The, um, the, uh, the, uh, oh, I just wanted to say on that food thing, the, the protein thing too is interesting. I mean, it's, you can, if you focus down, you can get so much protein because think about, especially with the smoothie, even just adding one smoothie a day. But if you're, if you're doing, but you know, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast on your dinner at night, which tastes mm -hmm. good, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and then oh, yeah. two tablespoons of chlorella on, on a salad or something. And then two tablespoons of spirulina in your smoothie. And then you do like a quarter cup. I think most people underdo like the hemp seeds and stuff or, mm -hmm. the, or like you do a quarter cup of uh, hemp seeds, you know, like even that right there, boom, you're well over, you know, you're, well, you're getting huge amounts for sure. Yeah. In addition to your food. On my, uh, I started, I started using chronometer um, very sporadically, but I did it to see like, okay, how much protein am I actually eating when I'm just like eating? Like, what is, I don't even know. Like, I've never tracked my food. Even when I ran my half marathon before, it's just like, I just ate. Yeah. Me neither. I don't, I, I had no idea like what I was eating, what the breakdown macronutrient breakdown, whatever. So I was curious because people talk about that all the time. And so I like tracked what I was eating for a little bit in chronometer. That took a lot of work. That's why I've never done it. I don't like measuring out what I'm eating no, <laughs> or like, yeah, yeah. um, but I realized like my, like I can eat uh, like a 700 calorie salad. Like that's a normal mm -hmm. meal for me. Oh, yeah. And I feel like people hear salad and they're like 700 calorie salad. Well, it's like, cause I'm putting like, you know, like toasted, um, you know, like dried out toasted edamame on it and hemp seeds mm. and be a whole can of beans and, and uh, tofu. And um, like, I really like, it's actually called like high protein tofu. It's just like has more water pressed out of it, but yeah. like a single block of tofu that'll have about like 75 grams of protein in it. So and that incredible. stuff is so much easier to cook with. I like it so much better for cooking and baking. And it's cause it's much more firm. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I personally, I have no issue with soy as long as it's like organic and non GMO. And, um, I'll put that shit on like everything all like there's so much I could do with tofu I like have to try and switch it up so I'm not like eating yeah. it all the time and you can get so much protein and calories yeah right the high protein stuff is good and I do think this is one point of contention I have with the vegan community especially like restaurants and stuff uh maybe you guys agree how you know as a vegan you go to get a meal I feel like we're still in like the like the female Instagram phase of veganism you know where it's just all like you get, you, you spend $14 and you get some dumb little salad. That's like 350 yeah. calories. It's like, A, you spend all your money and B, you're hungry. Yeah. And B, you're hungry. It's like, I just want, can someone just, can someone start a restaurant where you just get rice and beans and some yeah. awesome fucking sauce on there for like, or like $6? yogurt yeah. land or like yogurt yeah. land where they're like, here's a bowl, dude, go to town. Yeah, and you're just exactly. like bean, the bean <laughs> shoot comes down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah fucking, that would yeah. be sad to me. I'm Black in on that one. Bean swirl, uh, that would, dude, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like you know, a cone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, You're like, yeah, I'll go saying. through Chipotle and I don't yeah. eat Chipotle a ton, mm -hmm. but like I saw someone get the tacos, like vegan tacos. And I was like, 
you're missing like there's so little food in tacos like right. just get a bowl yeah. like yeah. Yeah. so i get a bowl and i'll put like both kinds of beans and rice and and the like tofu sofritos and veggies okay. and guacamole and you fill that up and like that's a filling bowl with a lot of stuff and they don't charge you extra for getting both beans or asking for like extra yeah. sofritos yeah. or any of that so oh, yeah uh, that's interesting. Yes. And so, so let's, let's plug your Instagram. You're at born vegan one, right? Correct. Yes. That's your Instagram. So I, I follow you. I see, um, even to people who don't aren't vegan, like you still have some really good food on there. Like, it's just like, if you want to eat light, like for me, sometimes I feel a little bloated. I'm like, oh, I've been going crazy lately. I'll just have like a couple days where I go largely plant-based. I don't check that mm-hmm. often of what I'm eating, but it's like, I, make the salads and stuff and now one thing is funny is like i look i go through your comments sometimes <laughs> and <laughs> like people are like people are ruthless like the meat the meat eating community is ruthless sometimes but like a couple of them are funny because they're just like mild natured like 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 you'll do a whole information video he's like yeah i'm just eating this big mac sorry like it's, oh, it's yeah. funny like that's funny to me but like um i will say do you have trouble getting your message across since you were born vegan like because i think it's easier like even to me where I, I, it's easier for me to hear somebody go, dude, I used to eat like Texas Roadhouse twice a week, man. Now I'm vegan. I'll be like, okay, well, how'd that happen? But if you've never right. done it, how hard is it to, how it's like, it seems like it's easier to, to maintain it. It seems like your body is just used to it and stuff. And I, maybe that's your goal overall is to have more people born and raise their children that way. But like to people who are in their twenties, like, do you feel like it's tougher to get through to them? Um, it really depends. And yeah, everyone has a different way of reaching people. And I'm sure that, yeah, some people definitely resonate more with like the, yeah, I used to do this. I grew up eating, you know, for sure. Um, but then I get a lot of people who like literally will tell me they don't believe I've been born vegan. It's not possible because I must've eaten meat when I was younger. I must've had cow's milk or I wouldn't be able to run a half marathon. I wouldn't be able to do these things. So I feel like my message is just, just a little bit different as an example of like, because I, I have seen people say that towards like vegan bodybuilders too. They'll be like, well, you're only able to lift as much weight as you do or look the way you do because you used to eat animal products. Like, you know, you, uh-huh. you still have that resident animal protein like in you from when you were younger. That's what helped make you strong, you know? So I just feel like I have a different message and um, reach people a different way with like being an example of I can do all the same things. Like I haven't been held back at all. And mostly right. my message is not, um, it's, I do a little bit of food, but mostly I'm more on the like ethics, and stuff. ethics, philosophical, mm-hmm. scientific, like arguments, um, and slightly less on the personal stuff. And when I, sure. when I tell personal stories, it's like, I'm in it, you know, coming at it from, I'm an example of everything I've been able to do and I've never had meat, dairy, or eggs. And you don't need those to be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah. It's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's that, that, that part of it's, that part of it's interesting to me, um, in that, in that sense where, cause like, like for me, like had I converted, like, I feel like I would have like an audience cause they'd be like, dude, that guy, like all of a sudden a drop of the dime was to be able to, to just become a vegan. But do you, you ever think you've maybe inadvertently had something though? Like, does oh. that ever, does that ever stick out in your mind though? Like where you're just like, Oh was yeah. That? Was that like, Oh, Oh, yeah. I've definitely inadvertently. I've never oh, okay. yeah, yeah, my yeah, knowledge yeah. had meat. Um, but like I remember when I was really little, I think I ate some pasta at a vegetarian potluck that was mislabeled and the pasta was like an egg-based Eggs, pasta. Yeah. So it looked like just pasta with veggies and you know whatnot. And then like I found out that I'd eaten a little bit of it and it had egg in the pasta. Um, so I think that happened when I was really little. And then like the thing that stands out most to me is probably about seven or eight years ago, I was again at a potluck and there were like some chocolate bars Mm -hmm. and they were, they were similar packages. They were both like green and there was one that was open and one that wasn't. And I like read the label of the one that wasn't wasn't open yet it was easier to read the label and i thought it was the same thing and it was like mint chocolate but the one that was open was milk chocolate but they both had green packaging same brand so i thought i was reading the label of one you know and i remember and i remember this because like i took a bite and at this point like i'd never eaten milk chocolate in my life and there hadn't there this may have been even been 10 years ago there weren't like realistic vegan milk chocolate products like i think there are now and so 
I was used to eating dark chocolate. And the minute I put it in my mouth, I was like, this is really weird. This is Whoa. not like any chocolate I've ever had. And I like spit it out and, um, and then like <laughs> read the package and realized that it was milk chocolate. Flip the table so, over. What yeah. is this? Yeah. It also had an eighth of shrooms in it. It was in weird. It, it was, was gross yeah. to me. Like I didn't like it. And I yeah. don't know if I'd have that same reaction now because like I've eaten like oat milk chocolate and some, you know, so these newer products yeah, that are yeah. like mimicking yeah. stuff. Um, but yeah. Well, I, I grew up eating tons of meat and dairy. I love cheese. I love milkshakes. I, I was, I would eat like a two pound. St- my dad would challenge me at restaurants to eat like the two pound steak and I would do it and stuff, you know? And, uh, and then now with, I mean, it's weird. I, Cause I've tried every kind of non-vegan food since I've been vegan, just to like test it out, just to see if it mag- I magically feel better or whatever. This is a long time ago now. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it so much recently, but it's weird. Like meat tastes, tasted very, it tasted the same, but very, it just felt super strange. And I was like, like, okay, I'm not, this isn't like freaking me out or anything. Like I'm like, I'm going to cry because I ate some meat, but this is something I do not want to keep doing. And then yeah. it, eggs, like if I ever had like a, a pad thai with egg in it accidentally, I could eat that and no problem. Like the eggs seem to be the least offensive to where I could accidentally eat it in like a baked good or a dish or something. And it wouldn't, my body wouldn't freak out but dairy tastes so extreme to me now. Yeah. Like, so extreme. Like if I have a, if I have anything with like real sour cream instead of the fake stuff or like, like a sip of a milkshake or something, it just, it is way too over the top. So where probably I, overwhelms I, 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 your stomach too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. And I, I refuse to like, I haven't had enough to where that'll happen in a long time, you know, but if it's just, it's so gross to me now. And I, I prefer non-dairy everything. Well, obviously because I'm vegan, but it's just like, there's no desire to eat anything with dairy it's just so disgusting to me yeah have you all heard of the brave robot ice cream yeah i i I go to grocery outlet and that's like they're one of their weird like (laughs) off-brand vegan what's up with it what's it's uh so it's a real dare it's it's so weird so it's basically lab grown dairy so the product they call it vegan i don't they call it animal free it does not say plant-based there's some people in stores that like mislabel it as plant-based but it is not plant-based basically they took bacteria and genetically engineered them to produce whey protein from like you know a template basically so they're taking bacteria producing a ton of whey protein and then using that uh or whey and casein yeah, I think they're doing whey and casein, but they're taking this whey protein and then basically making enough of it that they're making milk with it and turning that into ice cream. Mm. So it's not almond milk. It's not soy milk. It's literally not plant-based, but mm. it also doesn't come from an animal. So it's like lab grown, genetically engineered dairy. I don't know how they got it through regulators so quickly, honestly. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the robot that's aspect what brave of it. Robot okay. ice cream is made yeah. with it. And so like, it's been a big debate again, among a lot of vegans where you've got people promoting it in vegan groups on Facebook saying, check out this vegan ice cream, you know, and other people saying, oh yeah, well, don't tell people like, if you have a dairy allergy, you will probably react to this the way you would actual dairy because it's Whoa. biologically identical to dairy. It's interesting. just interesting in a lab. Yeah. Have you seen this, Glenn, in the stores? The I'm looking like, at it right now. It I've looks never like seen straight it. up like like AI vanilla or some shit. It's straight up like I'm just trying to find Bill Gates' name somewhere. I'm honestly yeah, looking dude, it up. Yeah. Like I just I'm yeah. like I'm expecting to see like just Melinda with, this, with, with ice cream all over her lips yeah. and stuff. Like I yeah. no I, no I didn't see it, but yeah that's yeah. that's interesting. But, so uh, that's like one of these weird. So it's like I know and I know a lot of vegans who have tried it and have no problem with it because it didn't come from animals it didn't hurt animals it's Mm -hmm. not like whereas lab grown meat does exploit animals like lab grown dairy like it's all just GMO and biotechnology like it really doesn't involve animal exploitation so I know plenty of vegans that have tried it and I haven't and um you know, there's a lot of reasons sometimes like that's something that I have contemplated. Like, would I ever try this for the sake of, you know, and just the idea that it's real dairy and I've never had real dairy, like just kind of throws me off and I don't want to do it. But also it's like, I, maybe I'm just kind of a little bit of an old school vegan in this way, but like, I'm okay. Not needing something to be super realistic or needing it to be like dairy and it kind of weirds me out that like if I've never had dairy like 
do I want to start to like the taste of like fair, fair, real dairy? slippery slope? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, let's, uh, let's pivot here because I do want to talk a little vaccine, a little science if we can here. Um, yeah. the, uh, so I'm going to start with this. Um, Serena, I understand you are the number one fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson, not just a fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's pull up this thing. Let me uh, let me pull it up. I found this. Serena thing. hasn't you, seen this yet, right? You have, have not. You? So this is going to be a live uh, Serena reaction. So to, this, yes. this is so funny. So I sent this yeah. to me very early. I'm sure there was he was up uh, trying to catch some uh, yeah. some gains on crypto or something in the morning because I'm like, Dude, you, no, you, I just you, I just I just chill on ndt's timeline looking for <laughs> you, you get tyson alerts yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah so let's uh let's pull this up here it's really funny it's uh it's a twitter thread that somebody like picked out and made like a meme out of uh essentially but okay. uh this guy so it's gonna be tough to see but um it's uh i don't know who who chuck huber is but um it's uh in case so neil degrasse tyson just fires off this tweet it says if, in case anybody is curious Right now in the USA, every 10 days, more than 8,000 unvaccinated re- Republican voters are dying of COVID-19. And that's 5x the rate for Democrats, which, okay, source, nah, don't have one. And then so Chuck Huber goes, hits him with the, hey, do you have a source? Where's the raw data? That's exactly what Neil deGrasse Tyson would do if anybody said anything outside of his yep. narrative. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson hits him with the passive aggressive. Thanks for asking. Twitter, of course, does not lend itself to full citations, which it does. You can thread, by the way. And uh, he says, I derive the number from published COVID-19 death rates of unvaccinated people, about a thousand a day by his uh, claim. Uh, And from the polls that show 25% of Republican voters are unvaccinated versus 5% of Democrats. And then Chuck Huber goes, hey, you made it up. So thanks for clarifying. (laughs) That is so... (laughs) Yeah, no one takes more L's online than that, dude, and he just keeps going, dude. It's so great, dude. Remember the Steakums? Sorry, I don't want to do... Yeah, but just go on. Well, no, we'll talk Neil. We'll talk Neil. I mean, like, that death rate, we knew... I mean, anyone who listens to the show knows what we think of the numbers, but, like, I'm just saying, like, it's... It's it's very funny how you're just allowed to just make it up if you fit the narrative. You know what I mean? And many such cases. Like, I'm reading... Oh, yeah. Many such cases. Well, one, one perfect example of what they're making up is, like, all the people that are like, yeah, I got vaccinated. Oh, I still got COVID. I'm so thankful for the vaccine. It would have been much worse without it. It's like... Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Like, uh-huh. where? Show, like, what in the, What are you basing that yeah. on? Like, legitimately. Well, that's why it's you eliminate the, the, the you, That's why you want to eliminate the control group is because yeah. if I get it and it's a mild case and I haven't gotten my shot, I could be like, well, then why would I get the shot? Exactly. And yeah. that's what people were saying. Like back when people were like, oh, I got a mild case. It wasn't that bad or whatever. It's like, oh, well, you were just really lucky. Like last year it was, oh, you were really lucky. That's most people. Now it's, oh, well, I got the vaccine. I'm so grateful. And I'm like, you yeah. are literally making up that you think you, you're here. You are fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated. And you got Not, COVID. Yeah, yeah. And rather than recognizing or admitting that for what it is, you're just like, mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm sure it would have been much worse if i hadn't been like yeah. no you yeah. know a large percentage of people get asymptomatic and mild cases to begin with yeah That's and fun. there's the, there is the open question although i'm honestly it's starting to look not good for the vaccine group of ade right the which what's, what's that i mean and and various dependent, dependent oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and the, i heard people early on talking about this and i was kind of like okay like let's wait and see and they would put the data up but it's it is true like why are all the most vaccinated places having these crazy outbreaks Israel. and why are the exactly israel israel yeah is the, that's the big one for me it's like I, I don't get why i don't okay this is okay more conspiratorial why is israel being so honest about this shit like i don't I understand why they're like oh, we know the u.s lies about this shit and they're like 99 percent of cases are their hospitalizations are unvaccinated we know that's a lie but which israel, one are they using which one are they mainly using over there uh, Moderna and Pfizer, Pfizer right? Pfizer. So it's mainly yeah. Pfizer. It's great okay. Pfizer, pretty okay. much. The one that was proved. <laughs> yeah. Isn't Pfizer started yeah. by Nazis? Uh, yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's an anti-Semitic <laughs> vaccine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> no, but the the whole. I don't get it. I don't. I mean, I honestly, it part of part of this is like half dread and half. I'm really excited to see what happens next. You know, kind of. That's. Are you guys feeling the same? Oh yeah, it's a spectacle. Yeah. I want. I, it's got to be bad for it to really work. Yeah. You know. I like, think. What? I'll be right back. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. So well. So my theory about that is, I don't think it's so much about like why are they telling the truth. 
I think there's so many different narratives and interests and, and people with interests at play here. Mm -hmm. And they're all just kind of like throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks that it, and it like, it doesn't seem to matter that it's conflictual and contradictory mm -hmm. and all this. And so I think there are some people pushing for a narrative that the vaccine has waning immunity because then they can sell booster shots. That, thank you, so, thank you. That's my take too, exactly. So I think you've got that. And then you have other people who are like, no, if we tell people that the vaccine immunity is declining, then they're gonna admit the vaccine. You know, So it's like, you've got all these different mm -hmm. narratives and people with different motives. And, um, and I don't know if you've been following like the two high up uh, officials at the FDA that just stepped down um, uh, no, talk about that. No. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting right in the middle of the regulatory process two high up FDA officials stepped down. Um, and they haven't said like why yet, but there's all this speculation that, you know, they, uh, they disagree with approving the vaccines for children or, you know, all these different things. But I think from what I've read, part of what's going on is, you know, the Biden administration and the CDC came out saying that they're prop that they're basically recommending booster shots for people after a certain amount of time. And I think the FDA is pissed off because they're stepping on their territory and the FDA mm -hmm. are the ones that are like supposed to make that. So I think they've got internal strife, even within our government between the CDC and sure. Biden administration, FDA, who, and not even from like a science perspective, but just like a turf perspective of like the FDA is like, you're stepping on our yeah. turf or you shouldn't be setting precedent. And like, don't but like Biden, don't go out there and say, you're going to recommend booster shots. Yeah. when We haven't analyzed that data and made that recommendation ourselves, you know? So I think there's like all this internal stuff going on and I think it's just leading to this out of control narrative that like nothing makes any sense. It's all contradictory and conflicting and yeah. yet it doesn't seem to matter. And it all still somehow feeds like everyone manages to use that to still say, get the shot. And you're like a terrible human if you don't. Yeah. Even though they are like Israel and other places are like releasing data and information on a daily basis that should contradict that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm totally with you on that. And and like even to the I, I'm with you on the boot. That's exactly my, my take the entire time. This has always been about a booster program. Even the original shot has always been oh, about yeah. original. Pro There's no like there was no way that the pharmaceutical industry was just going to be like, let's just get our two shots, get our cash and run. It oh, yeah. was never, never the case. Anybody who knows any I, I'm reading um, Dissolving Illusions right now by mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you've read Great it, book. but, but yeah. side has been recommending that to me. I'm about halfway through it. And right now I'm in the polio part of it. And that blew my mind the polio yeah. um, aspect of it and how much yeah. it translates to like this now, like you, first oh, off, yeah. they fudge the numbers of, of polio. Oh, yeah. And this comes to, you know, I, I want not have to get into it right now, but like the DDT situation, why maybe like a lot of these cases are just DDT poisoning of, of let's just say all these cases that are COVID now are actually COVID. Um, you can pretty much launder anything the way, like they can, they can allow this vaccine to fail if there's a, a, a miracle booster on the way. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a, if there's this, that's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, we, we rushed that out. We have to get it. But the booster is fantastic and you need to get the booster. Now what, where I, where I differ or not differ, but uh, where I, I think this is the first mistake that whoever is in charge. And that's the problem with America. We don't know who's in charge. Um, they, they played their hand. They overplayed it. They overstepped just like you were saying. I think, I think the, uh, the Biden administration overstepped um, and they should have waited for like a quote unquote rough winter um, yeah. to happen and then roll it out in January and be like, look, we are doing a mass booster program in January to get everybody on the same page to mandate right. it. Right. Because how do you mandate it? Like if you're triple vaxxed, that, that means by rolling out a booster, you're saying that the original vac vaccinated people aren't vaccinated anymore. So There's a couple countries in Europe that now have an expiration date on their like vaccine passports for oh. if, if it's like 280 days after your second shot, then you're no longer allowed in the country and not qualified as fully vaccinated until you get a booster. That's so insane. That's so insane. And like, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. Like, I, I mean, for me, it's like, I, Hey, roll out the boosters. I don't, I, I want them to roll out the boosters faster. Now I selfishly, I'm scared of like my parents going to get the booster because they will, but like, I'm, I'm scared of that because I think three MRNA shots in a calendar year is there's just no way that's a net good i'm sorry like it just isn't especially with the fact that they were johnson and johnson on the first one and then they're gonna start mrna boosters 
Uh, you know, like, so, because I mean, Johnson Johnson doesn't have a booster. So like, you're going to have to basically get Johnson and Johnson and then switch to Pfizer, like, or really, because I think Pfizer is the only one that's going to have the booster, I think. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's weird. I think it's too jumbled right now. I think this is the first mistake because I think this is a masterfully pulled off plan. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> up until now, like I'm a little, I'm, and maybe I'm wishful thinking. Um, and I did want to talk a little bit about the, the, the horse paste here the horse uh the horse stuff but um i this is funny too i wanted to show you guys this uh uh i showed Cy this earlier but this is like i i saw this tweet today and um this i gotta give this person dead it's brain dead sued on twitter ps eud um he says it puts in quotes it's like two people having a or one person having a conversation says hey ivermectin that's a drug for horses and then it says starts consuming dairy products <laughs> <laughs> So yes. yeah, it's, well, that's it's a good one. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting how like because yeah, we don't we want the human grade stuff. Um, yeah. what do you? There's a, a a story that came out from Rolling Stone today, and it's like it's basically like a 23 year old Rolling Stone liberal writer just went through Twitter and like picked out everything that dissident people are talking about and made a headline out of it. This is they're saying that Oklahoma cannot treat gunshot wound victims. And no, people are thinking, oh, because of unvaxxed people, right? Right. Not just unvaxxed people, ivermectin people are going there for poisoning. Oh my God. Yeah. I, There's no way. On this, show yeah. me the data on well, this. Well, go ahead, talk about it because I'll pull it up. I want to see what they say. Go ahead. I am so skeptical. Like, when I see all these things about like poison control center is getting lots of calls for overdoses because people are taking this, I'm like, or if, like I saw something that was like a 70% increase. I'm like, what is that? Like, if, did you get one call for this a month ago and now you're getting two? Like that's a 50% increase, you know, like, like what, I, I don't know what those numbers are. I do not believe that that many people are being harmed by ivermectin. That said, I it is still a drug. I'm skeptical of like, I think most pharmaceutical drugs tend to right. have some side effects. I don't know as much. I don't know if I personally would use it like prophylactically. Mm -hmm. Like I uh, prophylactically, then again, similar to the vaccine, it's like, if you are perfectly healthy and you're taking something, I'm more concerned about the side effects or risks of that drug or thing. So I think, um, and I, I think there is some, some decent evidence on prophylactically, or at least, um, like if you're living in the home with someone who has COVID, like physically around you in close proximity and you take it. But I think the best evidence I've seen and what is most compelling to me is early treatment with it if yes. you actually get COVID. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I'm just skeptical that there's lots of claims, calls about side effects. Are there some, did someone probably yeah. overdose on some horse ivermectin? Yes. But what's ridiculous about it is how many people have been talking about ivermectin for months to have the media just now flipping out about it. Um, and, and ignoring the fact that the only reason people are going to vets to get it is because the FDA is making it as absolutely difficult as possible to get the human form. Yeah. And they're treating it like, oh, it's off label for COVID. Well, they're running clinical trials of it right now yeah. to see if it's effective. So where's the EUA? Where's the EUA while the clinical trials are going right, on? We need emergency right. use treatment. Let's get an EUA for human grade ivermectin. Let's treat this virus. Let's get everybody natural immunity plus a little maybe pharmaceutical yep. help if you're vulnerable. And then we can have antibodies plus the vaccinated population yep. if they choose to. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think it's crazy to focus on side effects of ivermectin when <laughs> you're not talking about side effects of the vaccine. It's like, oh, are yeah. there some side effects? Sure. Do I think ivermectin is one of the safer drugs available on the market? Yes. Like nearly 4 billion doses of it have been given to humans for river blindness and uh, these other like bacterial illnesses. Like they just hand it out in other countries all over the place. And, and, and this was the same with hydroxychloroquine too. Like everyone freaking out about how dangerous hydroxychloroquine was. I'm like, you hand that shit out to people in other countries for malaria. Like yeah. it's nothing. Why was well, we, there yeah. no discussion about yeah. again, side effects then? So I think it's very, um, yeah, it's, and, and the FDA 
their like ridiculous tweet about like you're not a horse like oh, yeah, like, yeah. like oh that is that is some just ridiculous crap yeah. because like it is literally also on the world health organization's list of most essential medicines and that's yeah. not for covid like it's being it's you know most essential for treating other things but it can't be that dangerous if four billion doses have been given and you haven't ever talked about the side effects of it before and uh-huh. and you you have like countries like i believe i don't know what jamaica is actually doing but jamaica has like a four percent vaccinated population and they've had like mm-hmm. 1600 covid deaths with a five million person population like it's it's wow. wild. these people are doing other things ken i want to say it's kenya is using antivirals for malaria that they've had left over with uh-huh. which uh, okay what does that mean that's probably hydroxychloroquine <laughs> or at least some somewhat you know right. or or one of these things because that's it's anti-parasitic and uh um malaria stuff and their kenya is like one percent vaxxed and they've, I think, I think they're, I don't know what their death rate is, but it's a very, very low percentage. Hmm. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people over there are in eat a little bit better as far as maybe not quantity <laughs> of food. Maybe there's some scarcity of food there, but like, I'm sure people care a little bit more about what they put in their body and don't eat as much greasy stuff. And maybe their BMIs is a little bit lower, you know, over there and yeah. stuff. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it and we won't attract this where we won't attack this from a nutritional standpoint. We won't attack this from a, um, let's treat this virus. It's let's eradicate this virus. And like in dissolving illusions, um, <laughs> a lot of these viruses were eradicating themselves naturally for a while. And then all of a sudden the vax roll out and then you see just absolute, yeah. uh, um, hysteria over over this and also did you guys see that um pfizer is developing their own uh version of i don't know if it's ivermectin or i see i si and i were talking about this is this ivermectin or quercetin i'm going to pull it up on the screen like that they're trying to mm-hmm. basically develop i would I, I guess it would make more sense if it was ivermectin but um there's a new treatment pill administered in a new pfizer cl- uh clinical trial for covid19 yeah. uh, supposed to be available supposed, it would file emer- another eua emergency use authorization october of december of this year and um essentially it's an oral antiviral treatment made by pfizer and it's uh it's basically supposed to be taken alongside with vaccination which i think mm-hmm. is kind of wild like i think that's put, yeah putting yourself on there but um this isn't the best article here, but what I saw was it's supposed to attack the enzymes, um, essentially, which is what I thought quercetin was supposed to do for COVID. Um, I thought I had read something about that, but, um, do you guys know anything about this or is this just truly just trying to beat ivermectin at their own game since they know it's, I have not looked into it much. And I also don't know slash remember the details about what quercetin does. I know that ivermectin, um, I think it, has an ability to bind the spike protein from COVID that's, that kind of gives it an antiviral property. So I don't know what this new drug is. I have not looked into it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause it's, um, yeah, there it's, it's like, we're waiting on the, I'm just going to laugh. Let's say it is an ivermectin thing. So these people are going to tell you like, ah, you know, Trump supporters killed overdosing on horse paste, but then you're going to have people like, oh, reading that in the paper, reading that on their phones while they're taking their Pfizer supplement in the morning alongside yeah. their mRNA vaccine, like, oh, idiots. Yeah. You know, like it's it's yeah. we are so illiterate. It's like, well, it, yeah. yeah. And uh, going back to the the bed shortages because of horse paste overdoses too, the bed shortage thing is so misleading right now. Mm-hmm. It's really, I think what's going on in most places is a staffing shortage and they're calling it a bed shortage. But part of what makes up beds is how much staffing you have because they have to have a certain ratio of like staff to beds to be able to put people in those beds. And like both locally here in Kansas and like things I've read elsewhere, there are like major staffing shortages and that they will tell like hospitals will tell you it's due to COVID and and like whatnot. But I think part of it probably is COVID burnout. Like some people are just like, I'm done working in this kind of environment, you know, but I think also they're firing people or people are resigning over vaccine mandates. They are losing nurses and staff and even doctors um, and then they're all like, oh, our beds are at capacity. Oh, our, ho- our hospital systems are at capacity. And they're like making the issue worse actively right now with what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. And there was, there were layoffs, I thought in the spring too, not even like, not even just here's the vaccine. It was like, 
uh, kind of dead. You guys want to go home? Like kind of thing going on. Like anybody want to take some VTO right now? Like, like layoffs, I believe it was in the spring in certain, certain States where, um, you know, Sai said this, our last episode, it's like, okay, if you're, if you're a year and a half into a pandemic and you still have an ICU bed shortage, like who's that really on? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, like who, who is that? Like, it's time to look in the mirror and stop blaming us plebs for right. not, you know, taking your, your, thing which yeah yeah it's fda approved but it's still conditional based on like five more years of myocarditis reporting and stuff and and like yeah you know, i just get some I, more beds in if that's what your problem is no they're getting trucks i i love the performative thing like they're getting like <laughs> like like trucks for bodies and stuff and it's like we're still at the mass grave part of this we're still at the at, at this part so like no matter which way you want to slice it like you could be the most pro-vax person in the world but that should still shock you a little bit like why are these hospitals still overwhelmed like yeah. These are people that like are Medicare for all people that I know. Well, not anymore. They're not Medicare for all anymore for some reason, but they, uh, they, they're the ones who know our healthcare infrastructure is shit, you know? And, but then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, Oh, it's shit because of you. And it's well, like, and I've yeah. seen the claim too. I've seen some people, this is uh, related to Medicare for all claiming recently. And I think this is just kind of an absurd claim, but like, Oh, we wouldn't have so many anti-vaxxers if we had a good healthcare system and had medical or yes. Medicare for all where people, and I'm like, have you looked around the world? Like there's plenty of other countries that have Medicare for all and still have people not wanting the vaccine. Like, yeah. What, yeah. like it, you got to start like why don't you start talking to people and hearing what their actual concerns are rather than like creating these think pieces and putting what you think is going on and causing like these trends when like you could just talk to real people and hear what their legitimate concerns are or focus on making your vaccines safer rather than trying to psychologically manipulate people yeah. into getting things they don't feel comfortable getting yeah exactly and like i i tell people all the time like there's people that are like, you're still not getting it. Like you're still not. I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm truly never going to. I mean, like I, I, I've gotten this far already. And like they asked me why I said, well, OK, they, or one guy said, what would make you want to take it or get eventually take it? I'm like, well, OK, well, a couple of things like one, like let's get rid of immunity for these for these companies. Like I, if I if I have to take something, I want to be able to sue somebody. Right. I mean, it doesn't seem that unethical to want to do that because we just see right now the Sackler family for the opioid uh gets all this immunity people yep. freak out how could these people get away with this i'm like you were literally just telling me five minutes ago i have to take this pfizer product like it doesn't <laughs> it's so like they're immune like i the sackler family i want them all underneath the jail trust me i'm i'm with you i want them gone i can't stand them but like it's so weird these companies are like oh the opioid manufacturers they don't deserve immunity but pfizer yeah like that's that they should be immune from all this because otherwise they won't want to make a vaccine because it's too risky and it's like right. uh, yeah, that's risky. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> maybe that would emphasize, maybe that would encourage them to make safer products. Shocker. Yeah, love, take longer. When they, yeah. Yep. Uh, they couldn't rush it out as quickly. They'd have to focus on safety a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love when they act like this is a new thing. Like these COVID vaccines have legal immunity li from liability. And it's like, it's actually been that way for like 25 years. <laughs> yeah. Like nothing's changed. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. exactly. And, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's wild. I, I don't like, I'm not taking it. I'm, I'm glad all three of us haven't yet either. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, this sounds kind of snarky and stuff, but there are people I think that have like, I've seen over the last year and a half that looked like objectively worse. And I don't, I'm not blaming it on like a vaccine or anything, but they like look like they're not doing so hot and they want to lecture me about health. And it's like, I've actually like kind of I'm not saying I've been perfect, um, with, with it, but I've actually like, you know, trimmed up a little bit. I've, I've really started, you know, caring about what I eat and realizing like, Oh, maybe don't take in this sugar here. If you're trying to like stop uh, a, a pandemic. And it's like, it's almost insulting. And I know you guys are probably feel that exact same way about like certain people kind of like trying to lecture you when you know about 10 X, what they know, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's sad. Like, I don't yeah. know. The whole thing about like health, uh, and this is kind of going in another direction, but I think the whole thing about health, has become very politicized and wrapped in with uh, the body positivity movement mm -hmm. and some other stuff in ways that when, in my view, if you step back and look at it and ask the question of who benefits from this narrative, it's the pharma industry and corporate profits. And I think it's being sold through a lens of liberal political correctness and social justice. And people don't realize that. And it's like, 
You just like summed even, up our whole podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I that's appreciate funny. it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. But yeah, I mean, health, I mean, just like I'm seeing all this stuff about, you know, like in the vegan community, people saying like, oh, just because you're vegan, you know, doesn't mean, you know, you can't get COVID or stop saying like diet is cure-all. And I'm like, I've never said diet never. is cure-all. I, I don't believe that. Yes, vegans can get COVID 100%. That's like also saying like, yeah, non-vegans, I mean, like vegans can get heart disease too, but you know, vegans get cancer, all these things. I've never said a vegan diet, even a whole foods plant-based, you know, healthy mm -hmm. vegan diet is not a cure-all for those things. But when you look at the statistics, it is still accurate and fair to say, you know, broad claims like a whole foods plant-based diet or a healthy vegan diet can prevent and reverse, you know, 50, 60, 70% sure. of X, Y, and Z of this disease. And so like, but that's the way statistics work. That's the way percentages work. Like yeah. nothing <laughs> is going to be a hundred percent. Yeah. And so I see people twisting that and being like, I know one healthy vegan who still got a serious case of COVID. And it's like, to them, that's a proof that like a vegan diet doesn't help you or that eating healthy doesn't, you know, like kind of trying to act like diet has nothing to do with COVID. Like it's totally separate from infectious disease. Stop pretending that, you know, eating healthy and taking supplements can like save you from an infectious disease. It can't. And it's like, I never said it yeah. can or will save you, but statistically speaking, eating this way, doing all these things, exercising, like all of this statistically speaking, yeah. will significantly reduce your risk or chance of having COVID or getting a severe case of it. Well, yeah. You I'm know? sorry. You know what that is though? It's, it's, it's them using their own logic to say that that's your logic basically. Cause they think uh, taking a COVID vaccine means you will never die of COVID. Uh huh. So there's yeah. a zero that to them, it's a 0% chance. So they're thinking like, well, you're saying this and you're no, I'm not. It's the same way when people say, Oh, you think the virus is fake? I go, no, no, no. I probably believe that it's more real than you do because you think you can eradicate it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, it's there endemic. Yeah. It's endemic. It's here forever. I'm trying to live with the virus. I want to treat the virus. I want to yeah. develop antibodies for the virus. I want to do all this stuff. I'm not trying to take this stupid fucking Pfizer shortcut. That's going to yeah. probably, I'm not going to lie. It's probably going to create a worse version of COVID. I still see, I see people getting sicker now from this shit than yeah. I do. And this is anecdotal. I have no numbers for that. It's just what I've right. seen around me. I've seen way more people since the vaccine like get COVID and actually be like pretty sick. Like Oscar De La Hoya prize fighter mm -hmm. is in the hospital right now. And he's vaxxed. Mm -hmm. Like he's yeah. in a hospital bed. Jesse everyone Jackson around, and his wife. Were in was sick a couple of weeks ago and I didn't get sick. Cause I, I had the Alpha, anybody's after yeah. zoom, you know? Alpha, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Oscar De La Hoya got taken down. Like, uh, ridiculing, yeah. uh, everyone's ridiculing, uh, Joe um, Rogan. Joe Rogan right now because yeah, for, you know, oh, shit, let's go. all this you brought it up you brought yeah it this up. is the last we thing we'll talk it. about that's perfect please Serena bring it up yeah yeah, yeah. we told her to bring it up guys I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead please please but yeah no they're like ridiculing him and making fun of him or saying oh he just got lucky and it's like and yes that's anecdotal but here is an example of someone who got COVID didn't have the vaccine, did all the supplements, healthy eating, working out, like whatever. And then you've got plenty of these examples of other people who are vaccinated and then getting really serious cases. And I, I did see someone post, I haven't fact checked this myself yet, but it's from someone that I follow and trust. And they right. shared something that uh, looked like a screenshot of data from the UK showing that it's legit now that um, the case fatality rate and severe hospitalization rate is worse in vaccinated people That's than so. in the unvaccinated. Indian. I saw that. I think I have that timetable. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's wild. I, I, we saw, I think that's I sent that to you yesterday that IFR, like the accurate IFR, yeah. I don't have it in front of me, but we'll save, yeah. it for another, save it for another time. But why, why did Rogan take all that stuff? I was, I was, I was kind of wondering that like he took a bunch of shit. Like he did yeah, a, yeah. an AC flush or like a nice flush he did or like uh um, it's a bunch he of... still thinks it's it's like this the completely novel worst worst thing in the world yeah. type of thing you know that like even a lot of the ivermectin crowd are you know like petrified you know, granted, yeah granted because they work in icus and stuff but they you know they they think that for the majority of people it's just like the worst thing to ever happen kind of thing and yeah. uh, a lot of people are like that i find you know that's why alex berenson was always like why do you guys care so much about ivermectin like this is doesn't this isn't shit you know <laughs> kind of, yeah yeah which i don't necessarily agree with either but i'm just you know that's well i think it's because we're such an unhealthy country i think it is a, it is a lot of shit like i i i bet yeah. you a lot of those kenyans got infected and they're just like hey man I, i'm 
like I'm eating well, I'm doing, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not consuming all this disgusting shit that you guys are consuming and stuff. And, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Cause I largely think like, if I get it, I'm probably not even going to take anything, honestly. Like I, I'm like probably just going to ride it out, like take my vitamins and stuff, but it's the same. I have vitamin D I have all that. My wife ordered like a vitamin D light. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Like, the, it's like a, yeah, 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 like uh, sad lights, like for yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She just likes it because she works indoor. I work outdoors, so I get a lot, but like she mm-hmm. works indoors and she just like well, wants to do it. She does red light, she really into light, she loves red light therapy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, she uh, she she got that stuff, but like, yeah, for me, I'm like actually starting though like a little bit like okay this is like starting to gain a little bit more strength like maybe i do need to keep a little something around because like i'm seeing stuff like i mean you know everybody hates when you say it but it's like this if if you vaccinate against a virus and the virus is still allowed to be spread amongst the vaccinated it's only going to get stronger it's the same way as if you dump hand sanitizer all over your hands all day you're going to get a worse cold than you would without it well, the funny, the funny thing about this whole phenomenon that we're in is their whole story worked for the beginning of this when mm-hmm. it was novel and knowing what the fuck is going on. But now everyone is hyper-focused on this on all aspects from every corner of the internet and the globe and, you know, on all sides, whatever. And it's the internet era. We all have smartphones and everything. So their narrative is going to continue to crumble more and more. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, it's like you said, they overplayed their hand and there's too many eyes on this thing. Now it's like a perpetual, like nine 11 was, was an easy one to like, they you know, they could cover up do the Iraq war, do the Afghanistan thing. And everyone was freaking out. You know, they were able to just sneak that in really quickly because everyone was just tripping. Right. This is like, everyone's talking about the same shit day in, day out for what's yeah. going to be years now. Right. And, and, and it's so, not, yeah, it's happening in it's, front of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's happening live every day. It's like a little bit changes, all this stuff and a little bit more of the vac slips up a little bit more of the ADE. So I think it's gonna, it's gonna create an unprecedented awakening in, I don't, I'm not saying the majority of people, but a huge, maybe five, 10, 20% of the people that are like, fuck the FDA, fuck the who from here on out. I'll never trust these again. The CDC, do you guys agree with that? Or do you have any, do you well, kind of see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, like, I'm hearing yeah. it already. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was yeah. going to ask like, what are you guys hearing? Because I, I feel like I'm in two like radically different circles. Like I have my connection with, you know, my very liberal Democrat science friends and these three if, guys behind me, right? Those yeah. Guys, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> and my experience in conversation with people in that crowd and and I have a lot that you know that's that's a lot of people from college that's a lot of the vegan community um it's like I and I hesitated to say this for a long time but like I really think that there is a psychological or mass psychosis something going on in essence because logic does not matter like it does not matter how many holes I can poke it like I've stopped even trying to share data or have conversations with those people like honestly and I tried for so long and in my experience like none of what we're talking about it does not matter like they are as attached to the narrative no matter how conflicting and contradictory and messed up it is, it's like, it doesn't matter. FDA is still like, they. I've got these people that are posting things, you know, making fun of ivermectin. Like several people that it's, I know personally bad. who posted yeah. like, uh, you know, jokes about it. And then I would comment, cause I had to and say something like, did you realize this is on the list of the World Health Organization's most essential medicines? Like it's Boom. people are only going to, you know, vets mm. because blah, blah, blah. And then they'd come back with like, they're like, here's the page from the FDA that recommends. And I'm like, I like have told, I just told you the reason people are doing this is because the FDA is making it hard to get. Like what made yeah. you think that the yeah. FDA and whatever they say would be like a good source to me, you know? Yeah. Um, Cause I think they're corrupt and I've said that, but anyway. So like, I've got these people who I feel like none of this matters and right. I'm getting a little bit hopeless in many ways. Like nothing is going to wake them up and they're pushing harder yeah. and harder for vaccine passports and mandates. Ugh. And then I've got the other people who are fully supportive of vaccine choice and, and mm-hmm. kind of not part of those. So I'm like part of these two radically different communities. And I don't feel like I'm, I'm connected with people in the middle or seeing much in the way it's like the people I know who are over here in the the pro-choice community have been that way for a long time. And then I've got the people over here that are pro mandates. 
and so I'm, I am curious, like, do you guys have hope? Cause like, I'm very scared about yeah. the mandates yeah. and the direction things are going and have friends on the daily that are legitimately yeah. worried. They're about to lose their jobs and have no income. And what are they going to do? Um, yeah. so like, what, uh, what will it take great. to change yeah. this? What you're saying is happening. The problem is that even, so I'm not, I'm not saying that people awakening will lead to a better world immediately per se. I'm saying mm -hmm. that this, I think it, this will awaken people and red pill them while at the same time, the governmental control will not go away anytime soon because we've given up too much already. I it's know. kind of both. It's both. People are losing their jobs and we, you know, Glenn and I, well, you know, we, we won't mention any names or anything, but there are certain, you know, covid uh skeptical like communists on twitter that are kind of saying like oh vaccine passports don't matter this stuff's never going to be a thing all this stuff is like no yeah, it's a that's thing, the worst it's mentality is just yeah it won't happen. it's happening yeah, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. No. Uh, in australia yeah. what the fuck is going on yeah in australia? It's a testing <laughs> it's a testing ground for authoritarianism is what it is yeah. it's trying to see what sticks it's like so how, how do yeah. i get that here or oh that's too much that's like kind of yeah. what australia is to me but but, yeah. but serena you like i got chills from what you just said just because it applies to my life so much um i don't my circle is more like parasocial with the truthers, to be honest. I only know a few, but it'll be okay. some surprising people where I'll be like, never talk to them about anything other than work. And they'll be at work and they'll be like, hey, man, you ever uh, you ever think like Fauci's full of shit, man? Like, I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like what? And then, then boom, like we go on. And then uh, yeah. did you hear about the AIDS thing in the 80s? with Fauci? Like, yeah, like things like that. But like mm -hmm. my family and stuff, like I love them to death. And it's become one of those things where and I think size always been like this because like, I remember with him and me like before I really got into what it was like I think he kind of didn't want to talk about certain things with me because mm -hmm. you get scared it's like a landmine right like you what if I reacted mm -hmm. like like to well, like what the fuck are you talking about dude like what do you, word, what do you yeah, mean yeah. those planes are dropping stuff on crops like you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah you know like like he could react the wrong way and like that's the same way with like my family and some of my close friends where like I just don't want to talk about it like yeah. I, I, we spent, this is our 90th episode and I bet you most of it's been about this shit, but like, we don't want to, yeah. like, I, I know, I feel like we know so much about it now. It's like, I don't want to talk about it to somebody who doesn't. I like what you said when I was talking about, uh, an acquaintance of mine where you're like, isn't it funny when you know the propaganda before they do like, you yeah. know, you, you can predict that what they're going to, yeah. I'm like, fuck, that was so true. But that's the yeah. thing. And whenever I do challenge it, because sometimes I'll have a family member that'll be like, why didn't you get this shot? And I'll start, I'll go, fine. You want to know? I'll tell you why. And they'll go, where did you hear that? They don't say it's wrong. They don't say anything. They say, where did you hear that? And that's the most mm -hmm. Nazi shit I've heard in a while. Yeah. If you really break down what that means, who, who decided that that was okay information for you to hear? <laughs> and, like, and they want to stomp wow. that shit out of yeah, the source. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah it's scary just, it's you scary know it's you know what's it's, a good you guys know well we've talked about this a little bit but i'm i'm sure you know serena like sam someone like sam harris right yeah he's like famous for being the law and i've known this has always been bullshit but like famous for being the logical dude cool calm and right. collected or claire lemon from quillette right like australian she, you know she was famous for being like the anti-woke journalist that's all you know uh -huh. like all this stuff and they are, they're complete authoritarians, all vax mandate, all this shit. Yeah. And it's just so, I mean, it's great. It's not an intelligence thing. It's really not. It's not like a raw brain power thing. It's not like, it's, uh, it's, there's something else going on. And this is the way I felt even before this COVID thing, I think we've talked Serena about how there's another element to he, something, how our brains are wired or something, or just how we view the world that puts us into these camps. But yeah, the, the Sam Harris thing is embarrassing. Like, I mean, that guy. I don't want to make it about him or whatever, but it's just, it's just so strange how, how someone like that could just fall into this, like use the weakest and the, the biggest logical fallacies, the weakest evidence to support say a vax mandate, but be like, it's like the meme of, you know, the SpongeBob meme with Patrick where he's like hammering his hand for, yeah, for one yeah. panel and then like super scientific, like super, it's exactly that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I know like you mean. have totally different standards for, for what yeah. you call evidence for what you, yeah. It's and tribalism. Like, it's tribalism. Like the ACLU too. Like, did you oh, see yeah. what they've yes. been saying? Thank you for bringing what? that up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, what is it? Who are they now? Like, what? what? Like they were. I'm not sure. They haven't. They haven't even updated what the letters stand for anymore. I bet it's something else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's like they—they they were the people that supported like neo-Nazi marches, right? Yeah. Like they yeah. they have defended yeah. Nazis and like Ku Klux Klan members, right? Like, of assembly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. 
you know, mm-hmm. and now it's like, oh, we fully support vaccine mandates. Yeah. Because well, did you read? The, did you see their their two thousand eight document about the pandemics? That's the best one. No. So, no. So the best, the cra- obviously, it's crazy what they're doing now. But the best is they released the document in two thousand eight. Everyone should read it. We should try and find a link or something. I'll I'll, I'll see a, if I can. Pull yeah, it's it up a va- it's like a vaccine. It's like a vaccine preparedness thing. And oh, hold on. Uh-oh. Lost you. The whole, the whole, oh, you there? No, you're yeah. good now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The whole, sorry, I had to plug in my shit. The Zoom's like sucking it dry, you know? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. But the, the whole thing, this ACLU 2008 document is like governments can use pandemics to take away civil liberties. And it's, it's, it's crazy. No, they got got for sure. They yeah. Got, it's, they, yeah. Pandemic yeah. preparedness, uh, yeah. the need for a public health, the need for a public health, not a law enforcement national security approach. Like, yeah, it's yeah. wild. Like, they literally have our take right now. And it just, yeah, it's exactly, it, yeah. but it's uh-huh. easy because that was, I mean, that was probably around the time getting ready for swine flu and stuff like that. But that it mm-hmm. was wild to me is, is like, I think what really hits people hard is like, because there are some people like, you know, like Serena, you're saying some people are like lost. You're like, I can't, I cannot reach this person, but maybe there is something in that person's head just a little bit that they're just terrified of like the dumb person getting this right. Because yeah. a lot of the dumb people did. And when I say dumb, I don't mean dumb. I mean like the every man, you know what right. I mean? The every man, every woman, just the, the basic kind of like worker person that could just yeah. do their own research, which was told early in the pandemic is not allowed. Um, like yeah. to do their own research, get this right. And that's why you see these people. Like I got in an argument with this, with this person. And it was, it was a, they told me to listen to a show about ivermectin and about um, the ICU stuff. And like, his take was like, Oh, Fauci's bullshit. Oh man, I can't stand this guy. He's like, but get your shot. And if you don't get your shot, that's fine. I'm not going to restrict anything except ICU access to you. And it's like, Okay, well, that's a weird, very weird, incoherent take, in my opinion. <laughs> so I go back, I go back and forth with them, real civil and stuff. And in my head, I'm thinking like, this is one of those smart journalist guys. Yeah. And he is trying to solve a problem in a way like he's trying to make a conspiracy theory true, right? That like, oh, the World, Org- World Health Organization's bad, um, all that stuff. Yeah. But he's still trying to like work within that framework of like bullshit science to yeah. get to that point, you know, just that like he was like saying like, oh, I don't like Brett Weinstein because of uh, um, I don't like Brett Weinstein. I don't know. I sent him some Robert Malone, the mRNA guy. I sent him yeah. some of that stuff. He goes, those guys are a little pompous to me and they, they rely too much on confirmation bias and stuff like that. I'm like, stop All right, right then and there. Like, what does Pfizer do? Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. literally the Internet is censoring misinformation. That is the ultimate form of confirmation bias to yeah. where if I Google something only pro Pfizer shit comes out like that's uh-huh. confirmation bias. So like, no, I'm sorry. Like it's the twister. It's the twister. You got to yeah. get two reds and a blue as an intellectual. You got to cover all your bases and then you end up falling <sighs> yeah. flat in your face and looking like a dumbass. Yeah. Damn. Meanwhile, yeah, the, the MAGA dude 16 months ago was like, fuck no, we shouldn't mask three year olds. You know I mean? Yeah. It's like common like, sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah, common exactly. yeah. sense uh-huh. like real talk like because it, everybody has their takes until the, it's like that everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth the mike tyson quote it's the same yeah. concept it's like everybody know thinks they have a cool science take until it's time to actually do science and then you turn into an idiot so like oh, yeah. you know is what it is but uh serena I, I really appreciate you coming through i'm glad we got to get one in um go your, your podcast is called science is gray correct is yes that, yeah science is gray everybody go listen to that um our listeners know Dr. Jonathan Latham. You had a very good episode with him um, uh, with that. And um, you're at Born Vegan one on Instagram. And uh, anything else you want to plug? Um, my website, uh, Born Vegan, YouTube mm-hmm. channel, Born Vegan. Just look up Born Vegan and okay. you can find me. Um, and I've got content on a lot of different platforms. Lovely, cool. lovely. You got well, a lot I, of fans on this spot. People seek out. They do. We have, we sure. have, yeah, um, pretty cool. I'll tell you, we had, I'll, I'll say it right now. We had an episode that had, that got deleted. Um, <laughs> somebody tried to tell us how to run our show we decided that wasn't a good idea serena caught a stray from that though it sucks because she was i listened to the episode she said a lot of really really good stuff and even yeah. the other guy said a lot of good stuff too but just you know yeah. they told us they told us we can't have a song in it so i was like you know what that yeah. song's part of the show then the show doesn't come out that's just the way we decided um nonetheless uh a lot of people were like hey can you still send that to me like because <laughs> no because you've been on and i will say this Go to our other episodes. Um, we they, we had a, a, a couple episodes with you on that have been very good. And this was pre-vaccine rollout. And I I bet you if you go back and listen to them, I'm pretty sure we were pretty on point. Like, I'm just going to say yeah. that much. Like, they're pretty Conspiracy good. Conspiracy theorists have been on point. Like, that's what's yeah. so crazy with like, oh, even just I have to throw this in, like the, the waning immunity, right? Who was saying yeah. how long are these vaccines going to last? Are they going to? 
Who was saying that? All the mm-hmm. conspiracy, so-called conspiracy theorists yeah. were, were predicting that. We've all been right. All I'm saying is even <laughs> if you don't trust us yet and you think maybe we're just operating off of luck right now, why don't you err on the side of caution and just side with us first? It's probably better to go that way, that bad yeah. things can happen from certain uh, trusted agencies. You know, why don't, why don't you actually just side with us? And then if we're wrong, just call us a dumbass. You know what I mean? But we haven't been. Mm-hmm. So uh, nonetheless, um, one thing I got to plug, uh, everybody go to our YouTube channel. Because if you're listening on audio, if you're an NFL fan, we did a very fun uh, NFL show giving every head coach a alpha or beta rating. It was very fun with Marcus Johnson. Um, that's on YouTube only. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, uh, he's at CryptoSci on Twitter. I'm at Glenn Rockney. This is Rare Candy Pod one um on twitter uh check us out there and uh yeah thanks serena i appreciate it thanks so much